Welcome to Film Dialogue on Horizon, a new show that brings you international cinema and the filmmakers behind the films. My name is Alex Kalignamos, and I'm the director of ARPA International Film Festival. This year marks the festival's 15th anniversary. For 15 years, ARPA International Film Festival has been bringing to Los Angeles international cinema, including the works of Armenian filmmakers from Armenia and the diaspora. Tonight, we proudly present the 2008 film, Float. Our experienced staff is here to meet your every ice cream need. And don't forget, here at Float, our motto is, It's all about the ice cream! Actually, I hate ice cream. I just was looking for Ray Fulton. What if I were to tell you that I'm Ray Fulton? And I would tell you that I'm your daughter, Emily. He may not be, uh, how you say, uh, a rocket scientist, uh, but he's a very honest living he makes. Huh? Get work. Can I get a martini here, please? No, 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 uh, two cokes. Uh. <laughs> Look at this guy. It's not going to do anything. <laughs> but I need the sound system by tonight. I need the wind. I'll get right? you your sound system, not by tonight. I'll get you your rims. I don't want any complaints, though. I told you the rims are used. While you are here at Float, it's all about the ice cream. Aye, aye, Captain. I see her in the sky. I see her in the sea. I see her in my eye. I see her with me. Captain. My wife left me. It's uh, me. It's all right. I got a question for you. Yes? You know how Susanna feels about me? Up, dust my thighs. I don't know if this is gonna it's work out. This is more of a bachelor situation. Did you ever love mom? <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. Take it, shit. Gonna find myself another place and you might say that this is where I belong. We'll go for too. Lightweight division. Easiest way to get respect, knock some guy upside his head. You know, this is quite a life you lead. I didn't realize being the manager of an ice cream parlor paid so well. Yeah, actually, it does real well. Is she coming home? I don't know. I don't think she knows yet. So, what are you doing for work now? I'm gonna start fighting like MMA, you know, mixed martial arts. Oh, yeah, sounds very promising. Strawberries and tomato ice cream. When was the last time you watered these? That might work. Are you listening to me at all? Bye bye. You messed this up for me. There's going to be hell to pay, do you understand? <laughs> American. Lost my job today. If you try real hard, you can feel the earth move. Like you could float. Can you feel it? Float ice cream? Welcome to Film Dialogue, a new show on Horizon that brings you independent cinema and the filmmakers behind the films. We're here at the Glendale Beyond the Stars Theater, joined 
by actors and filmmakers Haraj Titizian and Johnny Ascension. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you. you very much for being here. Uh, the format of the show is that we'll be talking with our filmmakers and actors, and then we'll be screening the film float for you so that you can get a chance to experience the film for yourselves. Um, before we do that, let's get a chance to meet Johnny and Haraj. Uh, Johnny is uh, a filmmaker and an actor. Uh, where were you born, Johnny? Uh, in the Philippines. Moved over to the States when I was eight. And East you, Coast. You always wanted to, when you, how old were you when you moved to uh, the East Coast? Uh, it, it was after college. Yeah. Came out here to visit a friend for a weekend and went to an acting class with him. And that was it. And that was it. Got the bug. And how, for how many years did you train? And what was your process like as a, as a working actor? Uh, I, well, I, you know, uh, I took a lot of classes. I enjoyed the process. I really segued more, uh, really latched on to filmmaking uh, more than anything. And uh, right now, I think, you know, again, that's for my future. I um, uh, got a couple of things. I've been, I've been doing a lot of writing, you know, uh, and uh, hope to direct again soon. And of course, uh, produce produce some films. And, and nowadays, it, with with uh, all the kind of content like that they have now, it's relatively uh, it's easy. Yeah, you know. and of course, writing. You wrote Float. Oh, that was is one of the best experiences I've had in my life. Yeah, Ri writing and directing and acting were the three hats you were uh, you wore in this film. And Harach, you produced it and starred in the film. Can you talk a little bit about what that process was like for you? Yeah, I, I did. I, I co-produced with, uh, we had another producer, Peter. Um, and uh, that was a new thing for me. That was, uh, we had done a short film prior to that. But other than that, I had no experience in, in production. So it was, it was a learning experience for me as well. Um, it was a little difficult to act while I'm producing because you're worried about production stuff when you really should be focused on you know your scene and, and, and the acting stuff but and you um, hadn't done that before or had you had you uh, had on you, the short film yeah short but this film. was on a different level because there was more at stake and you know more people and everything was just bigger um, but it, it was it was good I'm glad I did it and uh, look forward to doing it again hopefully sometime soon so tell us how you met each other well we met back in uh, 2004 I used to run a theater and acting school in uh, Hollywood called the Actors Playpen. And so Johnny and I were in class together and uh, we did some scenes together. We saw each other's work in class and uh, he was a filmmaker prior to that. So he approached me one day and said, you know what, maybe we should do something together. So, um, And how did, did you find out about his class? Uh, it's, it's funny, actually, I was, I was taking a cold reading class there about uh, a year prior, a couple years prior. And I thought it was the same class, so I walked in looking for my old instructor, and there was Harach, uh, happened to be there at the office. And uh, I remember he was wearing uh, his, uh, yeah, his uh, Vans or Pro Keds and this, uh, that uh, beach hat. And I was like, wait a minute, this guy is running the studio? What kind of studio could this be? Uh, but he offered me a free audit, and I was very impressed, you know, the professionalism. And he did mention that, you know, the, there was not only actors there, there was writers and directors as well, and everyone was free to bring in their own material. So that'd be a great place to, to showcase some of my scenes that I had written. And what was the uh, coursework in the class? Actors were able to just put up whatever they wanted or were you giving them? Both, both. It was a scene study class and we also focused on audition technique. Um, our goal was really to get actors to be working, you know, yes. and um, so a lot of times the teacher would assign certain scenes to actors, certain <clears throat> exercises, and sometimes uh, the actors would bring in their own stuff. Uh, stuff and from film, plays, whatever, and, or they can write their own, own scenes. And how soon was it that you decided to work together and, mm -hmm. and make movies? Well, I, I remember specifically, that was the summer of 2004 when I walked in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, by, uh, w within a year, you know, uh, immediately I liked Haraj's work. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it took a while for, for me because, uh, you know, even, uh, well, I had some equipment but still there's a little bit of an investment involved in hiring a crew, professional crew, and as you know, registering with SAG and that sort of thing, you know, doing things correctly. So uh, I think the following summer we started talking about doing something and by uh, Thanksgiving of 2005, on the way back, I wrote a script on the plane. It's a short called First Sight uh, that we shot in uh, Haraj, was it um, between Christmas and uh, 
uh, like the New Year's break when everyone was on break and we were able to get crew, you know, if they weren't working on anything, which they probably weren't during that, they were willing to come out and help us out, you know, for basically next to nothing in a meal. Uh, and when that, when we got in and with first sight uh, with a 15 minute short, was it 15, 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. We won a couple awards, and then that's when we decided to uh, uh, talk about doing a feature. And uh, as luck would have it, one of the guest instructors that Harach had had uh, hired for Harach ran the studio, but there was actually professional acting coaches, you know, who was teach who were teaching the classes. And one of the guys who would substitute every every now and then was Gregory Itzen, mm. uh, who was a working actor at the time. And again, during his run as a substitute teacher, correct me if I'm wrong, but this mm -hmm. is my memory. He, you know, he, he got a guest spot on uh, 24 and got nominated for... Uh, it, was, it was a recurring, heavily recurring role. Actually, I think he became a series regular for one season and he got nominated for an Emmy Award. And he's a, he's a great actor. I mean, he has a huge, huge, huge uh, resume. And so, you know, he wanted to work with us too. Well, he saw First Sight and he goes, you know, you, 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 guys, you guys have talent yeah. uh, as a team, you know? You, and I said, yeah, because we have a feature if you want to take a look at it. And uh, what we did, we, we, we should give uh, Peter Paul Bassler some credit. He, he is a, uh, our uh, producer who actually helped, you know, uh, uh, expedite things because he was way more experienced even as a producer than me. And he did a couple rewrites. He's a writer as well. He's still going strong. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, he's not here tonight. I think he's on location somewhere. Uh, but, um, but yeah, when he, when he jumped on board and everything kind of came together and, and uh, Greg uh, agreed to jump on board, that's when we got you know, as you know, a letter of intent, Alex. Right. And then with that, you can do wonder. It opens a lot of doors. And you got greenlit and you found your financing how? Because I think that's so interesting for many people who are out there are filmmakers. They want to know where to get money so they can make their films. It's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the hardest thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Rush. Well, we have the script. Once you have a good script and you have some names attached, then you start uh, putting it out there to people. Yeah. Um, and of course, then we, we were able to get Ken Davidian on board. That's right. And a lot of people know him because Borat had just came out. And so everyone knew who he was because he kind of blew up there. And uh, especially people in the Armenian community. So we did. We got some support from, from the Armenians. Um, uh, and we got one, a couple. one of the gals, one of the uh, executive producers that I, have, I had met. Uh, uh, I think two years prior on a project that I was working on, uh, it had access to monies from Texas. And uh, she was kind enough to bring our uh, little uh, production packet down there. And we got, we got great response from there as well. So some of our monies came from there. And, and really mostly uh, the Armenian community in Glendale was very supportive in terms of like if we had X amount of dollars, which was way below the market rate, of what it takes to rent out. I can only guess. Right, right. They would, you know, seeing who was involved, Harach, of course, right. young, young uh, up and coming at the time. I mean, he's established now, but at the time he was still up and coming with Ken. And the story itself, you know, we already had the website out with the, with the synopsis. So they were very supportive. I mean, we couldn't have done it without them. And you shot this film, so you met in 2004, you did a short a couple of years later, and then when were you actually in production with the film? Right, so we won the awards uh, for First Sight in 2005, and by uh, the summer of, uh, I think, 2006, we, we, I got the script together uh, for Float, uh -huh. uh, got Peter Paul Bassler on board, and sort of uh, made our way with Greg towards the end of that year and filmed in 2007. In 2007. Well, flash forward to 2008, when this film came to us at the festival, when it was submitted, uh, you know, it's always such an interesting thing to get the film, the process of reading about the film, reading the synopsis, seeing the actors in the film. Wow, it's actually shot here in Glendale, which is where, you know, we grew up, we went to school. And then to see the incredible casting, the stars of the film, the actors that you found, and how you found them, and to be able to get Ken Devichian right after Borat, what a coup, what an incredible success. And of course, Gregory Eaton. The film, uh, very good log line, very nice premise. Uh, shall I, or do you want to? You can, but before that, I, I want to mention to you, I don't know if you remember, I'd seen you several times. I had known you several, right. and I, I, had, right. I had seen you earlier that year and put you on notice saying, I don't know if you remember that, but saying, Alex, look, we have this film and you might be interested. And I never thought I'd, I'd hear from, from you but I didn't know it, that. That's funny. Yeah. yeah, I do remember several times. I, where did we meet? Where was uh, it? Through Jeff Lorch. Through Jeff Lorch, <laughs> who I went to UCLA with. That's right. Who's funny. Jeff Lorch won 
was in the commercial last year for the Super Bowl that won the million dollar prize for the Doritos. That's so cool. He's right. in the commercial with the dog and yeah. the glass falls on him. Yeah. That's right, Jeff Borch. Well, uh, Float, this, this is a, a beautiful film about the diverse culture of Glendale and it stars Gregory Eatson who plays a middle-aged man who runs an ice cream parlor, again here in Glendale, and breaks up with his wife, a very long relationship, and ends up moving into the bachelor pad of his two employees, played by Harach and Johnny, in two star-making performances. Thank two you. beautiful performances. And then the other actors in the film include Ken Devitian, Anais Tomasian, who we should mention right now, She's is in, awesome. in, in, in uh, the number one show in Las Vegas, Absinthe, with uh, Voki doing a uh, uh, Cirque-style kind of a cabaret show that's the hottest ticket in Vegas. So you guys did an incredible job with you know, giving you. yourselves the opportunities right. to, to shine and creating a fantastic ensemble cast. Right. Christine Rose, who was a uh, series Rose. regular on Heroes at the time, and of course Lauren Cohen, yes. who uh, uh, now again is very much working. Uh, she does a lot of WB stuff as well as some movies. That's right. So, and we sort of, uh, we snatched up after she did, uh, what was that National Lampoon uh, oh, yeah. movie what she had it? done? She had Rise done of Taj, The Rise of Taj. Rise of Taj. So we yeah. were able to get her right when she came to Hollywood. That's the only reason we were able to even get her the script. And she was phenomenal to work with, very talented woman. I'm very happy about how everything turned out. Yeah, and I, and I, and I can say, you know, watching a film like this in the process of screening potential films for the festival, you just can see, wow, the filmmakers really got it right. They, they really got an interesting cast with actors at all different stages in their career. Established actors, actors who've just become stars, up and coming actors. You cast yourself beautifully. And I thought that was so interesting when you were talking about the short film, you wrote it. And then when Harach read it, he flipped the parts. He, he just naturally... I wasn't sure which one I was supposed to play. Yeah. When Johnny's eyes, it was totally clear because, you know, he had wrote me. Yeah. Right. But, you know, I, I don't see that. Uh, we don't see ourselves as other, pe other people perceive right. us. So we're, I'm like, who am I supposed to play? <laughs> it, was this, it was essentially Alex. I had written a feature before, just sort of experimental and fun. But Float was really the first feature film that I had to dot the I's and cross the T's, have three stage, you know, three, three acts structure because uh, it was going to be passed around. And when they say that for, for newbie writers, they say, write about what you know. And, and especially characters, you know, Ramon was essentially a, a really dulled down version of me uh, back in the day. Or actually, uh, let me say this, a cousin. I won't say his name, but I have a cousin <laughs> who essentially is Ramon. And then Gavork at the time, well, you know, when Harach was a bachelor living in Hollywood, that's the best way to put it. Uh, I would just observe these things that he would do, which were amusing to me and sometimes brilliant about how he went about uh, uh, introducing himself to, you know, women. Uh, uh, the glory days are over. I'm and, engaged now. <laughs> that's all right. done. <laughs> uh, but uh, during your run, and then but I thank asked, God for those days, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you have to have it. I said, this is, you know, we would be at a yogurt shop and he'd, he'd pull some kind of stunt and I'd be like, this has to be in a movie. <laughs> well, your character really has it going on in the film. I mean, he's just uh, very successful. Yeah. But, but with... same as Sriracha, Heart of Gold. Yeah. See, th that's the thing. And it took me a while because that, I think that's why we had to know each other a year. Because again, the first time when I met you and you had that hat and, and you know, just sort of a, a, this young guy telling me to join his acting class, I'm like... This can't be for real. And then, you know, see him, how, how he comes off. But really, if you look at, first of all, his work and then get to know him as a person, really, you see, I mean, he's a loyal guy. He's one of my, my best friends, you know. And, and, and I think the beauty of that is the success that you've, each of you have enjoyed in your, in your chosen field. Uh, you know, Harach has been working steadily in TV, film, theater. Uh, last year, what an incredibly victorious year, you actually appeared opposite Robin Williams on Broadway in a Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo, which is a role that you created. You staged twice here in Los Angeles and then went to Broadway with that. So I think that that in and of itself uh, is, is so inspiring for actors to sit, you know, and he trained for 10 years here yeah, in Los and, Angeles. And in my, in my eyes, uh, uh, you know, and uh, Harash doesn't talk about this, but I, I really feel like Float was sort of a springboard. I know, I know directly from 
the screenings afloat, you know, from our handiwork, mm -hmm. you're able to sign with a, a great manager, yeah, uh, of course. Uh, you know, and it's and uh, you know, agent and sort of uh, get some notoriety and really took off from there. You you did work before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's always you know, work begets work is, yes. is what they say. So yes, especially yeah. when you do something like like float, where you know it's in the festivals and it's getting noticed, it's winning awards, you know people notice. So. And how do you manage it now, Arav? So like, how do you manage the opportunities that come? Are you, are you, um, I mean, you travel all the time now. I know you just came back from North Carolina where your show Homeland is filmed. I mean, what, what is that like now? How, how are you able and are you able to still work behind the camera and still be as prolific in front of the camera when the opportunities are coming like this? Um, well, the, the thing is, first and foremost, I'm an actor, you know, so I, if, if I'm getting enough work as an actor, I'd rather just stick to acting because producing is great, especially when I'm doing it with friends, but um, it, it, it kind of takes the life out of you. You know, it's like starting a, 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 every time you do a film or a project, it's like starting a business, you know? So you put everything into it and um, and it's done and you got to start another business. And it's, it's, it's a lot of work. It's more work than I like to do because I'm, you know, I'm not saying I'm a lazy guy, but I, I just focus on acting. And I, I love something about clocking in and clocking out and not having to deal with the stresses of of, of, of production so I, so yeah i mean on, on that end it's not that difficult unfortunately i haven't produced anything since since float but you know we, we talk about it and we want to work on something else coming up here because I, I do miss it there's you know it's like even if you have a great job there's something about owning a business that's right. that's different and, and it's more satisfactory than you know it's a way for you to have the autonomy if you're a storyteller to be able to tell it the way that you want to tell it. And mm -hmm. I often think about the beginnings of this industry, you know, those first, you know, first 10 stars, you know, Mary Pickford, Charlie Chaplin, and it's, they were all filmmakers. They were all making their own films, producing their own films. They had their sound stages that they owned. And I think those end up being the most interesting storytellers all the way up until this day when actors create opportunities like the ones that you created in this beautiful film float which we now are going to screen for you we hope you enjoy it from 2008 float